What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to debug Python files on your Chromebook. If you do not have Python coding set up on your Chromebook, check out my video showing you how. It teaches you how to set up your Chromebook for coding in Python under Visual Studio Code. I'll provide a link in the description. The description will also contain a link to the code in this video, so you can easily copy and paste. It's also helpful to know how to use function keys on a Chromebook keyboard. They do not have standard keyboards for function keys, but you can still use them. Check the description for a video link on how to use them. So let's begin. Open up Visual Studio Code and create a new Python file. Write down all the code that's displayed on the screen. Again, you can get this code from a link I'll provide in the description. Once you have all the code entered, it's time to set up a breakpoint. A breakpoint is a marker that you set that will halt code execution when you run your code with debugging. This will allow you to walk through code line by line to see if it's behaving properly and to also view the values of variables at specific points in time. Let's set a breakpoint on the line that says print start debugging, which is line two. To do that, click on anywhere on the line, then hit F9 on your keyboard. A bright red circle will appear next to the line number, which will indicate where the breakpoint was set. Hit F9 again to remove the breakpoint. Another way to add a breakpoint is by moving my mouse pointer to the left of the line number. You will notice a faint red circle appear. And when I click on that circle, it will turn bright red indicating that the breakpoint was set. So what this will do is halt code execution at line 2 when I run this file with debugging. To begin the debugging process, you can either hit F5 on your keyboard or you can click on run and then start debugging. Options for selecting the type of project you want to debug will appear on the command palette. Since we are just debugging a Python file, let's select Python file. And the debugger will start and halt execution at the breakpoint we set. The line where the execution is halted will be highlighted and you will see another marker next to the line number. You will also see some new buttons that appear at the top. These buttons will help you control the flow of the debugger. The first button will tell the debugger to continue code execution until another breakpoint is reached or errors occur. If the debugger doesn't encounter any of those, it will run the entire code. So if I put another breakpoint here and I hit the continue button, the code will execute all lines and stop at the breakpoint I set at line 9. So I'll hit the button. And now you see line 9 highlighted. If I hit the button again, it will finish executing the Python file. And you can see its results at the bottom of the page. So now I'll disable this breakpoint and run the file with debugging again so we can see the debugging buttons again. The second debugger button is the step over button and you can see its shortcut key, which is F10. This will execute a line of code, but if a line of code contains a method or function, it will not go into that function for further execution. Instead, it will execute that function behind the scenes and go to the next line. So I'll hit the step over button and you will see the debugger move to the next line. I'll keep hitting it to move through each line and I'll stop at line 7 which calls the display sum function. There's extra code inside this function that's listed down here. If I press the step over button, instead of going to the code inside display sum, which starts at line 12, it will move to line 9. But the code inside display sum will still be executed behind the scenes. It will just skip the process of stepping through it line by line. So let's say you don't need to walk through the code inside display sum or some other function that you created because you know it's behaving properly. Then use the step over button to quote unquote step over it. The next button is the step into button. 
This button will do the same as the step over button by helping you step through code line by line. But when you reach a function or method, let's use display sum for an example, instead of going to line nine, it will instead go inside the display sum function to continue stepping through its code. And now I can continue pressing the step into button until it goes back to line nine. So use step into if you suspect that there are issues with a function and want to walk through its code. The next button is the step out button. This button is used when you're walking through the code in a function but want to leave that function. Pressing this will take you out of the function and go to the code that called it. So if I halt code at line 12 and start stepping through code but reach a point that I don't need to start stepping through it anymore, I can hit the step out button to send the debugger to the line that called the function. And now line 7 is highlighted where display sum was called. Stepping out is helpful when you want to debug a certain part of a function and when you're done with that part, you would like to skip the rest of the function and continue with the main code. The last two buttons are restart and stop. Restart will just restart the debugger from the beginning of your project and stop will do just that. Stop the debugger so you can continue coding. So we're done with what the debugger buttons do, but a helpful part of debugging is seeing what values variables have at specific point in times. To view a value for a variable, the debugger must be halted at a specific line. You can see that the debugger is halted at line two. I can attempt to check the value for the test variable by moving my mouse over it. Nothing is happening. This is because the value for test has not been set yet because the debugger hasn't executed the line that sets the value. But if I step through the code until line five has been executed, I can then hover the mouse over the test variable and then you'll see its value right above. And you can also see its value in the variables window. Any variable values that get set will automatically appear here. Now, if I go to a breakpoint I set on the display sum function and move my mouse over the num1 variable, nothing happens because the line hasn't finished executing to set its value. If I step to the next line and hover over the num1 variable again, I can see its value appear above. And you can also see num1 appear in the variables window. If I step to the next line and hover over the num2 variable, I can see its value appear. And if I step through and execute line 14, I can hover over the sum variable to see its value, which is the sum of num1 and num2, which equals six. You can also see that the variables window has the values for the other variables. Another way to keep track of a variable is by using the watch window. I'll restart debugging. So if you move your mouse over the watch window, a plus sign will appear. If you click on it, you'll have to enter the variable name you want to keep track of. I want to keep track of the test variable, so I'll type out test. I get an error for its value. That's because the debugger hasn't reached a line that set a value for test yet. Let me also keep track of the variables inside the display sum function. I'll add num1, also num2, and also the sum variable. Like the test variables, there are no values being shown because they haven't been set yet. But if I step to line five, the test variable value will appear in the watch window. If I step to the beginning of the display sum function, you can see that the value for test disappeared. This is because the debugger will only show values for variables for the current function that's being debugged. If I now keep stepping through the code, you can see that the variables for display sum start appearing in the watch window. If I keep stepping through the code and leave the display sum function, its variable values will disappear, but the test variable value will reappear. They are not needed anymore, so there's no point to keep track of them.
You may be thinking, why not just use the variables window instead of the watch window because the variables window automatically keeps track of my variables for me. Well, let's say you only want to keep track of one or two variables that have to do with a specific bug you want to squash. It will be real difficult to do that when the variables window will keep track of too many variables. Here I added another 40 variables to the code. And when you debug it, you wouldn't want to deal with so many variables that you have to scroll through just to get to the specific variable you want. Anyway, that's debugging in Python on your Chromebook. Let me know if you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.